Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Scalise, uh, what percentage of NASA's contract dollars are spent on firm fixed price contracts? I'll have to get you the, um, the exact details on that. I don't have that off the top of my head. But uh, I can tell you that um, uh, where we can do firm fixed price, we do. And I can give you a couple of examples here. And then for the record, I'll, I'll provide you with more details. Um, on the uh, uh, tracking and data relay satellite system communication satellites, uh, those were fixed price contracts uh, for uh, uh, portions of the GOES satellite that we do for NOAA, those were fixed price. For many of our small explorer missions, the uh, spacecraft bus is often uh, a fixed price bus. Uh, what percentage of our contracts uh, beyond uh, in precise terms, I can't give you off the top of my head, and we'll get that to you. Well, for firm fixed price contracts, the contractor pays 100 percent of the cost overruns, correct? That, uh, if, if it's caused by them, that's correct, yes. And for cost reimbursement contracts, the contractor is not legally obliged to pay any part of the cost overrun, is that correct? That's correct. So is it fair to say that if NASA did more firm fixed price contracts, we'd be giving the contractor an incentive, a real incentive, to avoid cost overruns? We look very carefully at what type of a contract we use to try and, and, and balance the risk that's going to be in there. Uh, typically, we do firm fixed price contracts when we understand the requirements so that a contractor will, in fact, bid on it and know that they have a chance of being successful. We use cost reimbursement type contracts when there is some uncertainty in, in, the, uh, in either the requirements that we have or in the ability to perform. The, the, so we do a, a very careful risk-benefit relationship where possible and as often as possible we try and use fixed price contracts. But um, that isn't the only remedy that we, that, uh, that we can use. Mr. Scalise, it seems that we have here two extremes. We have one condition where the contractor pays all of the cost overruns, the other condition where the contractor is legally obliged to pay none of the cost overruns. Wouldn't it be useful to have something in between? Well, in fact, we, we, we actually do try and work that way. And, and I just want to, you know, on the firm fixed price, if we change something, we pay. If they can't meet the original specification, they pay. Um, and, and yes, I mean, we actually try and work those cost reimbursable contracts where we have negotiations. They will not be reimbursed for all the costs if we feel it was, it was their fault to cause it. We can't guarantee that at the beginning of the contract. We can't guarantee that at the beginning of the negotiations. But we do work hard to try and make that, make that stick and to, uh, and to assign uh, responsibility where the responsibility lies. What percentage of NASA's contracts, if any, are awarded under invitations for bids, uh, sealed bids rather than through competitive proposals? I don't have the answer to that. Um, most of our stuff is done competitively, but there may be some institutional activities that that are done by sealed bids. I, I can't answer that off the top of my head. Now, when there are competitive proposals, which I'm sure you'll agree is the predominant form of NASA's contracting, when there are competitive proposals, there's a cost technical trade-off in those proposals, correct? Yes. All right. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that there's nothing in the statutes that indicates to NASA what that trade-off should be. Is that correct? what the trade-off between the cost and the technical should be? Right. How much of an emphasis should be put on cost versus technical? No, we did, there, there isn't a statute for that. We determined that before the contract is uh, released for bid. Right, but the agency determines that in its sole discretion without any guidance from us, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Now, if we were trying to save money, it seems that one way we could try to do that would be to emphasize cost more in this cost-technical trade-off. Is that a fair statement? Well, we do emphasize cost. Uh, I, uh, it's a fair statement, but we have to manage the cost and the schedule and the risk and the technical performance. All, all of those factors have to be considered. Yes. Now, returning again to the trade-off between having a firm fixed price contract where the contractor bears the risk and the cost reimbursement contract where the contractor legally bears none of the risk, apart from the question of whether we should have something between those two, would you agree with me that now it's the agency that makes that decision and not Congress? Yes, I would agree with that. All right. Now, again, if we were trying to avoid cost overruns, do you think it might be a good idea for us to give you some direction about when to use a cost reimbursement contract 
and when to have the contractor bear the risk of the cost overrun? Um, no, sir. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, those are, are, are very difficult um, decisions that have to be made as we're developing our requirements. And, you know, when we have very stable requirements, firm fixed price contracts are absolutely the right thing to do. Um, and that determination, as was mentioned earlier, comes after we've done some definition of what it is that we want to achieve. And as I tried to mention earlier, we do, in fact, do that. Many of our spacecraft, for the small explorers, as an example, are, in fact, firm fixed price because we understand our requirements very well. And we have good performance there. So um, uh, I think it's going to be, it would be very difficult to look at each and every one of our missions to try and determine which should be firm fixed price, which should be cost plus, and which portion of the mission should be firm fixed price, and which portion should be cost plus. Because in any given mission, you'll have different types of contracts for different, different components that are being delivered. Thank you. I look forward to receiving the information that you promised. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman.